What's up guys, today I'm gonna to be sharing some luxury makeup and the dupes or similar products that go along with them to see which one I like better. I thought this would be a fun twist on a dupes video because sometimes a luxury product is so good or so unique that it can't be duped. So be sure to stay tuned to the end of this video because I do have two products here that I cannot find a dupe for. They're just that incredible. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. So first up, let's start out with some palettes. I have this Dior palette right here. This is the five colors palette in the the shade Tutu. This is $62 for five eyeshadows, which is really up there. It was definitely one of those splurge items for me. And I thought the formula was actually pretty decent as far as pigmentation goes. The only shade I really have trouble with is the pale kind of pinky white sparkly topper in the upper corner. I'm not really a big fan of toppers to begin with, but this one hardly shows up at all. It kind of just leaves like a light wash of sparkle. Overall, if I had to rate this palette, I'd probably give it like a six out of 10. It's slightly better than average, but not worth worth $62 in my opinion. So recently I bought the ColourPop of Quartz palette after seeing it in person at Ulta. I know this isn't new, but when I saw it, I just had to have it. I was really drawn to the cooler tones. It's almost like a mini Stone Cold Fox palette, which if you didn't know is my favorite ColourPop palette. It's not a dupe for the Dior, but I just felt like the colors reminded me so much of the Tutu palette. And I realized that I was getting very similar looks out of it. I think the one shade that I love in the Dior palette is that blue and it's missing from the Of Quartz palette. It, but I don't really wear blue all that often and otherwise I think the vibe is really close. Also the ColourPop formula is very consistent in this palette and I think it performs just as well if not better than the Dior. Particularly the shimmers, I feel like the ones in the ColourPop palette are just more pigmented. They're a bit smoother and less powdery than the Dior. So if you like these kind of taupey, smoky shades and you had your eye on the Dior one, I think if you wouldn't miss that blue shade, this is a really, really good option to check out. I've been using this so much. If I had to reach for one or the other, nine times out of 10, I'm probably gonna grab this one unless I want the blue in this palette. Next, I got these two palettes from Sephora Collection. This is from their Destination line. I haven't historically loved Sephora Collection's eyeshadow formula in the past, but when I swatch these in store, they actually seem pretty solid. So these are the Southern Charm and Island Hopping palettes. Southern Charm has taupey and plummy shades with a pop of emerald green, and it also has this gorgeous silvery lilac duochrome. It's super pretty, and it actually reminds me a lot of the Sigma Enchanted palette, just kind of like a mini version. It has the same purple and green color story and the Sephora palette's only $15. So I wanted to compare them and see kind of how they stack up. I think color-wise, these are incredibly similar, but I liked that the Sephora palette actually had a plummy matte shade instead of that warm orangey brown one that the Sigma has. I always felt like that shade didn't really go with the palette. Formula-wise, I think both of these are nicely pigmented and they apply really well when it comes to the mattes. I think the Sephora definitely holds its own in that regard. The biggest difference for me is actually the shimmer shades. The Sigma ones are really hard pressed into the pan. They feel like a topper, except they're more pigmented than a topper. They have a lot of glitter in them, while the Sephora ones are kind of the softer, creamier, like a satin to sort of metallic finish. I wouldn't say they're like a full metallic, but I think you could probably get them to metallic if you wet the shadows or apply them over primer. I don't feel like the Sigma ones really really need that though. So overall, I like both palettes. I think that this new Sephora one is really cute. I love the color story and I think that the formula is definitely decent, actually more than decent. I thought it was actually pretty good, but if I had to pick between the two, I think I would still pick the Sigma palette just because I like the formula a little bit better and I like shimmer shades that really pop more on your eyes. But if you don't and you're not a fan of like little micro glitters, you might actually like the Sephora one better. And then the other one that I have is Island Hopping. So this one is so pretty. It has beautiful rosy and lilac tones and it has the most stunning lilac blue duochrome shimmer, which is actually kind of what sold me on this palette. And when I got it home and started using it, it reminded me a lot of the Norvina palette. So let's go ahead and see how they stack up. Looking at the two side by side, I think the Norvina palette has a similar color story, but also a bit more depth to it, while the Island Hopping palette is a little bit more pastel. So when I swatched them, I was able to match up a couple of shades, but I think the island hopping is so light. It's probably not gonna work on deeper skin tones. It's probably best for like a fair to light skin tone, while the Norvina one has enough depth to work on a much wider range of skin tones. The lilac blue duochrome in the Sephora palette definitely makes it more unique, and I wish that the Norvina palette had that shade. But if I had to choose one, again, I think I would probably choose 
the Norvina palette. I just think it has a better formula. This one is incredible and really has stood the test of time for me. I still use this one on the regular, but I, again, I do like this formula. I think it's pretty good. The lighter shades do work really well for my skin tone. And I think I would pull this out specifically to use that blue lilac duochrome because it's a pretty unique color for my collection. I do have one more eyeshadow that I wanna show you and it's what I'm wearing on my eyes today, actually on my lid. The rest of my eye look is the ColourPop of Quartz palette, but the color that's on my lids is so incredible and I'm saving it to the end because this is a product that I don't have a dupe for. But in the meantime, let's move on to blush. So we have the Merit Blush Balm Cream Blush in the shade Cheeky. I have a couple of shades of this and I really, really enjoy the formula a lot. I use these all the time. But recently I pulled out my Flower Beauty Gel Crush Blush in the shade Blackberry Crush. Is that what it's called? Yes. And it has an incredibly similar feel to the Merit. So the Merit has a really balmy gel-like texture that's so soft, it's almost translucent. So it really just gives your cheeks the lightest natural wash of color. The Flower Beauty one feels almost identical, but I will say the stick packaging is slightly awkward to use compared to the Merit one. That one has a more rounded shape and it just feels more intuitive to use. The Flower Beauty stick is like so skinny that I feel like I have to swipe it a few times just to get the same amount of color on my cheeks as I do with the Merit. This one is just, you know, kind of one swipe and then blend and you're good. But packaging aside, once they're on your cheeks and they're blended, I can't tell the difference between them. I'm actually wearing one on one cheek today and one on the other and they look the same to me. These both stay just ever so slightly dewy. They don't dry to a powder finish, but they're close enough for me. I don't like a sticky blush at all. I hate those ones that kind of slide around on your cheeks or they feel like they're gonna lift your foundation. These don't do that. They're not sticky. They just have a slightly, slightly dewy feel to where if I touch it, it feels like I have a little bit of moisturizer on my face. It doesn't have that completely dry type of a finish, but I really love how natural these look and it just kind of looks like the blush is coming from within. So I would say the Merit has a slight edge for me for packaging, but I don't think that that's worth paying 18 more dollars for when the Flower Beauty one looks and feels exactly the same. So the other day I was going through my bronzers and I pulled out the Fenty Beauty Cream Bronzer. This is in the shade Butter Biscuit. I got this a while ago, probably well over a year now. I probably shouldn't even have it anymore. It says it's good for 12 months, I don't know. But I kind of wanted to try it again because it's been so long since I used this. And then as I was using it, it really made me think of my Makeup Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer, both the color and just the way that it applied. So I wanted to compare these two because the formula feels identical. So the Fenty is in the shade Butter Biscuit and the Revolution is in the shade Light. And swatched out, I think these actually look pretty similar. The Revolution is maybe just slightly deeper, but I also could have picked up more product when I was swatching, so I'm not really sure. But as they blend out, I think both of these retain their pigmentation. They don't sheer out that much. And I think the Revolution one is actually a bit more pigmented than the Fenty. So I would probably just use a little bit less of that one to get the same result, but the colors are honestly so similar and they both have that powdery finish that dries down all the way on your skin. Again, I can't really tell the difference between these two products. So if I had to choose, I would just basically go by price alone. This one is like $8, I think. And it's one of my favorite cream bronzers. I think it's part of the reason why I haven't gone back to the Fenty because ever since I got this one over the summer, this is just what I've been using when I reach for cream bronzer. So I think in this case, at least for me, we have a pretty identical dupe here and I don't see a difference between these two at all. All right, so now let's talk about the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Pillow Talk Wands or whatever they're called, Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wands. So I did mention these, I kind of touched on them in last Sunday video, but I really wanted to show some dupe options for these because they're $42, which is crazy expensive for a cream blush, especially when there's so many other ones at the drugstore. I think that Initially, when Charlotte Tilbury came out with her other beauty light wands, like Pinkgasm and Peachgasm and all the gasms, um, I felt like that was more of a unique product worthy of $42 because we really didn't see cream blushes that had um, shimmer or sparkle in them, especially at the drugstore. Everything had more of a matte finish. So I felt like those were a little bit more unique, but to come out with something like this for $42 when there are literally so many 
cream blushes at a much better price point. I just feel like it's not worth it. Not to mention, I do not like this packaging. I deal with it with the other Beauty Light wands because again, I just feel like they're a little bit more unique, although drugstore brands are starting to dupe them now. But I just, these get so messy. Like these are brand new for me, so they're okay for now. But once this tip here gets saturated with color, it just leaks out all over. It goes inside the cap. Just, I'm not a fan. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at some cheaper options. That way you don't waste your money because even though I do like these, I'm not complaining. I think they're a great formula. I just, I kind of regret spending $42 on each one. So here we have the Pillow Talk shade from Charlotte Tilbury compared with Rare Beauty in Courage and NYX Sweet Cheeks in Nude Toot. So here are the swatches in the exact same order, Charlotte Tilbury on the left, Rare Beauty, and then NYX. I think that when you go to blend them out, the Charlotte Tilbury shears out quite a bit and I do find that I have to build them up a little bit on my cheeks when I'm using them. One coat isn't usually enough. The Rare Beauty one in the center, which is like half the price, is super pigmented. You really only need the tiniest little dot on your cheeks, so I think those go a really long way. And then the NYX one, I think, shears out kind of more similar to the Charlotte Tilbury, but it has a more velvety feel that I think dries down even faster than the other two. Honestly, I like them all. I don't think any of these are bad, but I think that the NYX one is closest to the Charlotte Tilbury because it's also a matte finish. The Rare Beauty one has a little bit more of a dewy finish. So I think on the cheeks, the NYX one probably looks the most similar. Next up we have Charlotte Tilbury's Pink Pop, Rare Beauty's Bliss, and Profusion's Blush Hour in Rosé. So these are all light peachy shades, and even though the Charlotte Tilbury one's called Pink Pop, it's actually more of a light peachy beige color. Not exact dupes here, but I think as we start to blend them out, the Charlotte Tilbury blends really, really easily on the skin and shears out a little bit, just like the first one we saw. Um, the Rare Beauty one is super pigmented. This one hardly shears out at all. It really just retains a lot of that color. And the Profusion one is actually um, the thinnest formula. It feels more like a serum. And actually it's pretty close to the texture of the Charlotte Tilbury one with the color actually being very close once it's blended out on your skin. So again, I love the Rare Beauty blush. I think it's an awesome formula, but I think the Profusion Blush Hour is actually closest to the Charlotte Tilbury in terms of both the feel and the color. Next, we have Charlotte Tilbury Peach Pop, Rare Beauty's Joy, and Profusion's Mai Tai. So none of these, again, are exact shade for shade dupes. I think the Charlotte Tilbury is more of a coral. The Rare Beauty is like a deeper coral. And then the Profusion is actually more orange. It has a little bit less pink in it. But blending them out again, the Charlotte Tilbury one shears out just like the previous two did. And I think that the Rare Beauty one really, again, hangs on to all of its pigmentation. The Profusion Blush Hour, again, behaved very similarly to the Charlotte Tilbury in terms of the thin, blendable feel. But I don't think it's really a good color match. So in this case, I don't think I have an actual color that I think would look similar on your cheeks to the Charlotte Tilbury Peach Pop. So out of all of them, I think this shade might be the most unique. Then finally, we have Charlotte Tilbury's Dream Pop, LA Girls Soft Matte Blush in the shade Hot Shot and Profusion's Paloma. Rare Beauty does make a red blush, but I don't actually have that one. So these are all just various shades of red. The Charlotte Tilbury is, I think, the most red. The other two lean a little bit more orange, but the LA Girl one dries down almost immediately. It's a velvety finish right from the start, and I think the other two retain a little bit of their glow until you actually blend them. The LA Girl one is also super, super pigmented. I couldn't believe it. I only used this tiny little dot of product product, while the other two are, again, a little bit more thin. So I think the Profusion one is similar in texture to the Charlotte Tilbury, but both drugstore options are slightly different colors. So again, there's no exact color dupe here, but the whole point of showing this is really just to illustrate that there are so many cheaper options than the Charlotte Tilbury liquid blushes. There are so many good ones at the drugstore, even the Rare Beauty ones, which are kind of considered high-end because they're at Sephora. Those are half the price of these. So don't get me wrong, I do like these. I think if you buy them, you're not gonna be disappointed. They're a really nice cream blush. I just kind of feel like at this point, a lot of Charlotte Tilbury products are just more hype than anything else. By the way, I just wanted to take a quick second to say if you are enjoying this video, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button 
button because that really helps me out and tells me if you guys are enjoying this content, if you're finding it helpful, if you are. And I see a lot of people subscribing and liking a video, then I know to make more of that content. So it really helps me to, you know, kind of find the direction of my channel and if things are going the right way. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more. So anyway, let's get back into it. We have the Dior Lip Glow Oil. So I actually couldn't get my hands on this for such a long time. I wanted it and it was always sold out. I finally ended up purchasing it and I have the cherry shade and this has a really huge doe foot applicator that's super comfortable, really soft when you're applying the product. It just feels kind of puffy on your lips. It's really nice. And it looks like a bright red in the tube, but when you apply it, it's actually mostly clear with just the tiniest hint of color that ends up developing a little bit over time. I think it has like one of those pH adjusting formulas, but thankfully it doesn't turn into a really hot pink shade like some of them do. So I do like that about it. It has a vanilla mint scent that reminds me a lot of vanilla Tic Tacs. Remember those? They were so good. So while I don't normally like minty products, I think the vanilla mixed with the mint is actually really pleasant. But recently I got the NYX Fat Oil and I know I did talk about this in a recent video as well, but I just wanted to quickly compare it to the Dior. So this is in the shade Newsfeed, which is a really similar red in the tube. And when you look at the applicators, they look exactly the same. The NYX one is just as soft, just as comfortable as the Dior. And it also has a fruity strawberry scent. It smells really good. And I think this one offers a little bit more pigment than the Dior does. It actually also feels a little bit thicker. It's more like a gloss than an oil, but I almost like that more because I think the NYX one, it just lasts longer on your lips. The Dior one, is thinner and I find that it sort of sinks into my lips and disappears after about an hour or so. But the NYX one, even when the shine is gone, I still feel it on my lips. I still feel that hydration. It's not as sticky as a lip gloss. It has more of like a thicker cushiony texture. So it feels really nice on your lips, but I just feel like it lasts a little bit longer than the Dior. And then another option also is the Milani Fruit Fetish Lip Oil. This one is in the shade Raspberry Peach. And again, it has an almost identical applicator to the Dior and it has the most delicious raspberry scent to it as well. I think the Milani is a bit more on the sheer side and it's also thinner than the NYX. So I think the Milani is actually more similar to the Dior in that way. It feels very, very close. But if I had to pick a favorite, I think I would pick the NYX one out of all of them just because I like the thickness of this one. As somebody who has really dry lips, to me, this one feels the most hydrating. And I also like that it has a little bit more color to it. These are so sheer. They really don't add that much in the way of color. And my natural lip color is very pale. So I do like to add a little bit of something extra. And I think the NYX definitely gives me that. Plus this comes in the most beautiful colors. I was wearing this in last Sunday's video, the dark brown shade, and it looks really dark brown in the tube, but on your lips, it's just like the prettiest nude. So Anyway, I think these are awesome. It's one of my new favorite lip products. Another lip product I really enjoy are these NARS Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balms. This is such an interesting and unique product in that it's a lip balm, so it's soft and really comfortable to wear. But unlike most balms, it doesn't give your lips any shine or glossiness. It has like this almost blurring effect, kind of like if you put on lip balm and then blotted it with a tissue to take any of the shine away, and it just leaves the color behind. So they're just beautiful. I have two shades unre restricted, which is a pinky nude, and then Brief Encounter, which is a soft nude shade. And recently, Sephora Collection had launched sort of their version of it. So these are the Sheer Matte Balms. They're only $10, which is much less expensive than the NARS at 28. I got two shades, pink and tan, and these are actually so similar to the NARS ones. They have the same soft feel with that blurred finish, and they don't leave your lips feeling dry, even though they're a matte formula. The only thing I do want to point out though is what's leading to some negative reviews on the Sephora website is that people are saying that these smell waxy. I mean, maybe very slightly, like just that sort of hint of like a crayon kind of a smell but they're fragrance free. The NARS ones actually smell like vanilla and they're pretty strongly fragranced. So if you prefer an unscented product, I would definitely check out the Sephora ones. I don't think they have any fragrance listed in the ingredients. Let me just look really quick. No, it says the main ingredients are castor seed oil, shea butter, beeswax, sunflower wax. So I think that's what you're smelling. Shea butter definitely has a fragrance. Castor seed oil probably has a little bit of a fragrance. So I think a lot of brands just cover up that natural scent of the 
the product with either a fragrance or they add something to make it not smell like anything, which technically is fragrance. So I don't feel like it was a bad thing, like all of the negative reviews were saying. I actually am wearing the pink shade in the video. I put it on right before and I don't smell it at all and I haven't this whole time. So anyway, I don't really prefer one of these over the other. I think they're so similar. I would definitely call these a dupe. I don't really feel like I would reach for one over the other. I think if anything, I'll probably get more shades of the Sephora because the two shades that I have are really similar to the NARS ones. So for in that way, it was kind of a waste, but Sephora actually seems to have a bigger range of colors. All of the NARS ones kind of look brown to me. So I think I might actually get some more shades of the Sephora ones because they have like peachy colors and they have pinks. So yeah, I think these are really great and I hear nobody talking about them. Next up, let's talk about a skincare product for a second. This is the Merit Great Skin Instant Glow Serum. So Merit has really only done makeup up until this point and then they launched the serum and this is $38 and it's one of those biphase formulas. So it has the oil mixed with the serum and it contains niacinamide and hyaluronic acid to lock moisture into your skin and help to give it a plump and dewy look. And it doesn't feel greasy like an oil at all. It sinks right into your skin like a serum, but I think the oil just helps it to feel a little bit more nourishing. It's definitely a nice serum. And when I use this under moisturizer, I definitely think my skin looks a little bit glowier than usual, but as I've been using this, it's kind of reminded me a lot of the Versed Sunday Morning Antioxidant oil serum. So this is $19.99, so it's around half the price, and it also has the same dual phase oil in serum. To tell you the truth, I actually like the ingredients in this one a little bit better. It has 22% camellia oil, vitamin E, sea buckthorn oil, jojoba, and hyaluronic acid. And just like the Merit one, it has a super thin feel that's not oily or greasy at all. It just sinks right into your skin. But I would say a major difference between these is that the Merit one, sometimes feels sticky after I apply it. And this one just, it feels more silky on my skin. And I just feel like this version is a little bit more hydrating. So overall, I do like the Merit one. I just feel like this does the same thing and more for less money. So at least for my dry skin, I like this one better. Next up, let's move on to two products that I have tried so hard to dupe and I just can't find anything exactly like them. So first up are these KVD Dazzle Sticks. This is another product I haven't heard anybody talk about, at least people who I watch on YouTube or TikTok. And these claim to be a vegan long wear eyeshadow stick loaded with brilliant flecks of multi-dimensional pearlescence to deliver prismatic color in a flash. They're 36% water that glides on with a refreshing feel and the formula dries down to a smooth finish, locking the color onto the lids. So I got the shades Flash Storm, which is a silvery shade with a pink and blue flip. It is absolutely stunning. And then Hailstorm, which is a soft golden pearl. And I'm wearing Flash Storm on my lids today. Like I said before, I used the Of Quartz palette from ColourPop, just the matte shades. And then I put this one on top and holy cow, these are just insanely cool. They just deposit so much pigment in one swipe. They blend really nicely. Once they set down, they are just done. For the rest of the day, they are not budging, they don't crease, and they do have a little bit of like a cooling sensation on your lids because they're a water formula. They're just super thin and they're not goopy like a regular liquid shadow would be. So let me just show you a side-by-side -side of some other cream products in my collection that I tried to compare this to. The first one, was the About Face Fractal Glitter Eye Paint in the shade Smolder. This is also a really beautiful cream eyeshadow that definitely makes a statement. It has a little bit of a duochrome to it, a little bit of a flip, but I just don't feel like it's quite as impactful. We also have the Moira Lucent Cream Shadows. These have gorgeous colors and finishes, and this shade Jupiter is also a duochrome. It's stunning, but again, it's just much more sheer than the KVD ones when I go to blend it out, so I just didn't feel like this had quite as much pop either. Then you have the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. Those also come in really glittery finishes. Some of them have duochromes. This shade is Ritz, which is one of their ultra glitters, but it's just not as pigmented as the KVD. Then we have the ColourPop Jelly Much Shadow. This one is in the shade Field of Fairies, and these actually have the water-like texture that the KVD ones do, and they feel cooling on your lids. I would say this is probably the closest in terms of the feel of the KVD, and these are also quite a 
bit more pigmented, but they're also more messy. They come in this little pot. People also complain that they dry out over time. I just feel like the stick of the KVD is just so easy. You can just swipe it right on your lids. Today, I actually swiped it on part of my lid and I couldn't really get into the inner corner. So I just put a little on my pinky finger and dabbed it on and it worked great that way too. You could probably even just use the, a brush with this and swipe it on that way. But these are just the most effortless cream eyeshadow I have ever tried. You don't have to build it up. It's not patchy in the slightest little bit. You have so much pigmentation. You just get so much color payoff with so little effort. These are incredible definitely worth the money. And then the other product I haven't been able to dupe yet is this Jones Road bronzer in the shade Dusty Rose. I talked about this in last Sunday's video and I just got so many questions in the comment section asking, is it like this one or is it like this bronzer? So I decided to just swatch it next to all my rosy tone bronzers so we could see if there really are any dupes out there. So from left to right, we have the Flower Beauty bronzer in the shade Sunrise, the LA Colors bronzer in the shade Beachy, the Mac blush in the shade Harmony, which I use as a rosy bronzer, so that's why it's in this category. Laura Geller's Baked Bronzer in the shade Fair. Then we have the Balm's Balm Beach and Balm Desert. We have the Gucci Bronzer in Fair, and then the Jones Road Dusty Rose at the end. So looking at them all lined up, I feel like these all look kind of brown next to the Jones Road, even though I normally think of them as more rosy colors. The Jones Road almost looks like a blush in comparison to the others. So, so then I thought, let me check it against some of my more dusty rose colored blushes. So here you're looking at ColourPop's Flirt Alert all the way to the left-hand side of your screen, then Bare Minerals Blonzer in Kiss of Pink, Physicians Formula Saucy Mauve, Tarte Exposed, and then Jones Road Dusty Rose. So for this one, I still haven't found an exact dupe. It's rosier than all the bronzers that I have, but then when I line it up with the blushes, it actually kind of looks more like a bronzer. So it's a really weird, interesting color. I'm obviously gonna keep searching for a dupe, but for now, I feel like this is one of the most unique colors in my collection. It can be used as a blush or a bronzer. I just think it's a really unique shade overall. So anyway, guys, this was a lot of fun. I always love finding dupes for you. Some of them work out as dupes, some of them really don't, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on these down below as always. And if you wanna see more dupe videos, if you have some extra time, I'll put my dupes playlist right up here on the screen so you can click on that and it'll bring up all of the other dupe videos that I've done more recently. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I appreciate it so much. If you're new here, I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe to my channel and I'll see all you guys in my next video. Take care, bye.